Hello, my name is Nicholas for Chess24 and welcome to the video highlight of round number 8 of the Chess Olympiad. Uh, we go ahead and start with the women's section today and the current standings are China in the lead in front of USA followed by Poland, Israel and Russia and now we are going to have a look at the decisive games at the tables 1, 2, 3 and 4 today. So we start off with uh, the highlight match, match, Russia against USA and it all looked pretty fine for Russia, especially when Valentina Gunina had this position against the US champion Nazi Paikice, where she's obviously in a very good position being a pawn up and having this nice knight on f3. And well, Nazi played uh, queen c5 in order to prevent rook takes e2 because rook takes a7. This position would be good for black, but what did she miss? She missed rook e5, attacking the queen, forth forcing the queen to uh, leave the square. And after queen takes a7, what uh, was played in the game, simply rook takes e2 and after queen b6, of course, you can go back and defend rook a7, but rook e1 is even stronger, threatening mate on g1 and Russia was in the lead today. But uh, then there was this nice game of uh, Nemkova played against uh, Gyeya and we'll start in the opening because it was very interesting. Gilya played g5 in this position and Nemkova decided to go for h4, which is uh, not very often played, but of course it, it is playable, h4. Normal move would be g4, um, but Olga Gilya decided to sacrifice, playing knight to g6. So after bishop takes g5, I was analyzing this position and uh, my, my first thought was, hmm, I don't know if that's possible. But after f6, what she played, e takes f6, black should probably uh, have equalized by now, uh, even though he's uh, or she is two pawns down right now. But uh, yeah, here comes the point what, what I don't understand at this game. And this is uh, Gilya playing bishop to d6 um, and after this move the position is just worse for black. Um, if she prepared it I don't know what happened but uh, king f7 should be the right move in this position and after king f7 uh, it's followed by knight takes f f6 and um, it's really complicated but black should have enough compensation for the pawn. and. See, you will see soon the difference between the game and king f7. And this is in the following variation. Rook e1, protecting against bishop h2. So king f7, bishop d3. And now the best move would have been knight takes f6, uh, which was not played by Gilya. But after uh, taking on f6, there's this knight to c5 threatening to take on f5, go to e6, which is very annoying. So you have to take this one and after takes, 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 this position should be good for white. I mean, you can maybe draw it with black, but it's very difficult. And here's the point. Now you maybe understand why bishop d6 is not a good move. Um, because it's just losing one move in the variation where you have to take on c5 and that's quite an important tempo in this position. Yeah, but she didn't play uh, knight takes f6 either way. She played uh, bishop to g4 and the position collapses very soon. After king f7, queen to e3, simply threatening to close this position and secure this pawn on f6 check and now e5 was kind of the final mistake that uh, Olga Gilya made. Um, it's probably playable after 
bishop to d6. Um, just having this idea of preventing knight to e5, because in this case you could take and give a checkmate on h1. But of course, uh, this position should be better for white, but it's not that easy. And after e5, yeah, it's pretty simple to win this position. Just take the bishop on h2 and now f3, preventing rook h1 and attacking this bishop on g4. And after bishop to e6, well, Nemkova could have just taken this pawn, but she played bishop f4, uh, which is also kind of the same, because this rook has to move and black cannot take due to queen takes e6, so rook to h5, and this position is just totally lost. Uh, white is three pawns up and won this position easily. Yeah, it looked very good for Russia in the beginning because uh, Kostenyuk had a really good position against uh, Krush. But um, yeah, Krush managed to equalize in the first place. And um, after winning material, she, uh, yeah, she won. That's why the USA won against Russia today and uh, is second place right now, right behind China. Okay, table number two, Poland played against the Netherlands and won with two and a half points. Um, I want to show you the game of uh, Sochko against Haast. Because um, Haast played a really calm game and she managed to get an, not, not advantage, but the initiative. Uh, in a few moves and played it really good. That's why I want to show you this game. Um, and it all started with knight to d5. This position position is probably a little bit better for white, but um, Sochko played knight to f3, which is a slight mistake because uh, black can grab the initiative right now playing knight to c3. And that's uh, why knight to e2 would have been better preventing knight c3. Um, okay, but now what's the point? The point is bishop f6, threatening to take on f3. That's why white needs to go back. And this position is a little bit worse for white. Nothing special, but um, yeah, Anna has to just continue to, to uh, having pressure. And um, one more mistake that uh, Monica Sochko did was h4 in this position because it, uh, yeah, the, the exchange of the queens is quite forced now after h5. Queen b4, a5, queen has to go to f4 and now black is able to win a pawn beginning with knight to c5 and now rook to a3 and white is threatened to lose this very important a pawn. That's why she went for knight to e5. Now you cannot take because there's knight d7. But you can take on h4. Being a pawn up in this position is uh, is good. <laughs> of course, it's good. But it's um, yeah, you can still hold the position with um, white. And I want to show you the final mistakes that Monica Zochko did in this position. Um, why she lost to Anna Haast, and that's uh, because she played knight c4 in this position, allowing black to take on f2, king f3, followed by f5, protecting this knight, and now all the pawns on the king side are dropping, and black had no problems to win this position. So what would have been better instead of knight c4, and that's pretty much doing what black does, beginning with bishop to e8. And if you take on f2, the bishop will take on f7. And now you should probably play rook to g1 with uh, black, followed by king f3 and check this position should be drawage. I mean, white is piece up, but after rook takes a4, I don't think there's any chance for white to win this position. So a draw would be the normal result. And you have even slight uh, losing chances if you go for 
uh, bishop takes g3 because it's followed by rook g8, king h7, rook takes g6, threatening a nasty checkmate. If you, for example, take here, there's a checkmate coming in. So that's why you should play rook c2 and um, sacrifice this piece. But this position, yeah, it's not easy, but you can win it with white. So, um, yeah, that would have been the trick after bishop e8. So, um, yeah, well, Sochko didn't find it. She lost because she played uh, knight c4. It was a great game from Anna Haast. But uh, Poland won and is now in the third place. On board three, Hungary against Ukraine. Um, was drawn, but uh, sorry, what did I tell you? Yeah, right, it was drawn. Um, and there was one pretty decisive game that was played by. Let me just find it. Dum -da -dum. Ah, here it is. Um, Maria Mutsichuk to uh, against uh, Lazane Vaida. And um, I don't know, this is typical King's Indian position and I'm pretty sure if uh, Maria would have just played the main line, uh, she, she wouldn't have lost and um, the Ukraine, yeah, probably would have won this uh, team competition, but um, I don't know why, I think she must have twisted some lines, she took on f5 in this position. Uh, which is, um, yeah, it's a huge mistake to take on f5 because it, it simply allows e4, taking the knight on c3, and you now you take with the knight on f5, and taking d4, and best move in this position probably taking on f5, but this position already is quite nice for black, because you can, for example, if knight, uh, if, if bishop d2 comes, you can play knight f4 and have this really nice active pieces. And yeah. But she, um, Maria played uh, knight to e3 in this position, which is almost losing. And uh, yeah, black played the right moves here. Going for queen h4. And bishop b5 in this position, threatening mate. And yeah, this posi position is so bad for white that uh, Maria tried to defend it, mm, but there was simply no chance against the pair of bishops and being a pawn down this open position against the king, there was, yeah, just no real chance to defend this position anymore. So, um, on table four, China, yeah, crushed the host, Azerbaijan. Um, yeah, that's why China's in the lead right now. And I want to show you the game of the world champion Hui Fan. Playing against Mamed Yarova. And in this position, pretty equal position. Both both sides having chances. Um, it all started off with Queen B1 and Knight to D4. N not a losing move, but the way that Mamed Yarova played it, it is losing. As you take, takes on c8, bishop takes c8, and bishop takes d4, and this position already is really tough to play for black. Um, and after bishop takes a3, it's quite simple lost, because black, uh, white can take on g7, if the king takes, if queen a1, and win this very important pawn. Because the uh, king is permanently weak and uh, Hui Fan switched her queen over to the king side and I don't know, played like this and yeah, checkmated her opponent. Slightly better in this position is knight to f4, threatening to take on e2 and uh, threatened to take on d4. That's why you gotta take and e3, rook d8, and now b4 or d4 with a small advantage for white, of course, being a pawn up, but 
it's not easy to win it but um yeah i, I guess who he found would have won it because this position is just better for white and yeah she's a really good player yeah that's what's going on or what was going on in the women's section so we switch to the open section where uh, three teams have 14 points by now after eight rounds and this is uh, in the lead usa followed by ukraine and india um and then 13 points for russia azerbaijan and the team of the world champion norway so um the fight on the first table was russia usa like in the women's section and we are having a look at the game between Nepomniachi and Wesley So. Yeah, I have like so many games over here, but I will find it. Here's the game. Italian again played with uh, early A4 for white, like nearly all people do <laughs> um, and, and for the half last year. Um, yeah, it's getting really popular popular to play this, but um, I don't know. Most games I see black can easily equalize, but okay. Like in this game, um, black easily equalized. And after d5, e5, f6, this pawn was kind of uh, the most important thing in the game, because uh, black black had this beautiful knight on e6 preventing any e6 and this pawn is always weak and in the upcoming moves black's just uh, making pressure on the f uh, on f2 and goes with the rook on f4 decides to make some pressure on a4 and that's what ended the game really quick because in this position queen b4 was possible threatening to take a4 and it's not possible to prevent the loss of the pawn because b3 is answered by rook to d4 with a really annoying pin on the knight that's why ian took on f4 but after takes knight knight f3 came because this just b3 it's just not possible it's too much you cannot play this that's why he gave up a pawn um but honestly you, you we don't have to look at the rest of the game because uh, wesley so was being a pawn up and uh, he just yeah he just finished him off um playing good moves like he always does he's playing very calm and solid and is taking his chances and um by now he scored really good in baku and congratulations yeah, to this result and the next game was uh, really quiet too between Ray Robson and Alexander Grishuk and this position is, yeah, if you have a look at it, it's really drawish, but it's not lost. If uh, Wesley So would have drawn it, uh, sorry, Ray Robson would have drawn it, um, the USA would have won against Russia, but um, Black's position has potential because you have this knight against uh, against the bishop in a almost closed position, and here Alexander Grishuk tries to make some more advance on the king side because if you if you if you are able to put the all the game just uh, on one side of the of of the bo of the board, the knight. Um, has slight advantage over the bishop which is a, a wide range piece f4 h6 a4 a5 and now king f1 that's a move where i would say this was the final mistake that ray robson had done yeah he should have played queen e4 uh, queen e5 um putting his queen on this really nice square and after for instance king g7 he shouldn't have lost this position it's i think that's kind of the point where you say it's it's totally draw maybe 
But after king f1, it allows knight to e4, having this really nice knight on e4. Black definitely has an edge here. And after c4, king g7, c5. I don't like c5 at all, because uh, it walks right into g takes f4. You, you gotta take back with the pawn, because uh, the queen has to defend d4. And after queen g4, it's just so many threats of uh, taking h2 or going to h5, d1, and it's so annoying. I think it's alre uh, already lost for white. Best defense would have been um, bishop to h h3 um, with a bad position for white. Uh, instead, ray captured on e4, which is just losing immediately. Um, because you take with the pawn and uh, the threat is quite simple. King f6, king f5, queen takes f4. If you, for instance, play h3, you just go over here and take this pawn. And I don't think that black has any problems winning this. Uh, that's why Ray played queen to f2. But this pawn ending is yeah, really simply lost. You could just go e3, e2, and it's over. So um, that's that was Russia against uh, the USA um, drawn, and on table number two, Georgia played against the Ukraine, losing one uh, to three, uh, three for Ukraine. Um, but the first game that was finished was really a brilliant game played by Baru Yubava, and I will or I want to share this game with you. So d4, knight f6, knight c3, d5, bishop to f4. Uh, <laughs> yeah, you probably think, oh, what's this? Um, yeah, this is just uh, the way to, yeah, to, to go around all this known lines and those uh, theory lines and just say, okay, I, I don't, I don't need any advantage. I just want to play chess from the third move on and that's why I play this uh, opening by myself was kind of the first opening I learned when I uh, started playing chess in 1998 and yeah now Baru Yubaba is playing it since 2000 and I think 14 and yeah let's see what he did c5 e3 c takes d4 e takes d4 definitely the move here um i was once checking on knight to b5 because knight to a6 is not a good move you can take back and this knight is bad forever but there's queen to a5 check b4 whoops not queen a4 that would have been a bad move uh, you take on b4 c3 and now knight to c7 check c2 queen to d2 and um the computer the engine say this is drawn but um if you give them some kind of advice um and let them calculate for a long time uh, they see it's it's not a good position for white because uh, black is able to sacrifice a pawn for development followed by knight to e4 and this position is really complex, but I'm sure it's better for black. That's why I, I don't go for knight b5 and uh, you shouldn't. Um, if you check up in the database, uh, the games that followed this line were drawn. Because black didn't sacrifice, he gave check and this ended in perpetual. Um, yeah, okay, just uh, just for you, little variation. So e takes d4, the right move, a6, preventing knight to b5, bishop d3, and now some development by both players. And mm, yeah, now rook to c8 was uh, the first yeah, real mistake that uh, Ruslan Ponomayov uh, did in this position. And I think he just miscalculated knight to f5. Because he took and now played bishop 
to e6, which is kind of a logical move. You prevent the, the rook from going back. And if there's no, yeah, no, don't know, no tactics at all, you can just attack this rook in the next move and white has to sacrifice the exchange. But well, there is, and it's a brilliant tactic that uh, Yobava played in this game and it's starting with bishop to h6 just uh, just attacking this pawn on g7 threatening queen to g5 or even taken on g7 followed by queen g5 best move in this position is knight to h5 um, where white uh, is is better anyways but uh, we'll have a look at what came in the game and this is uh, g takes h6 queen ta takes h6 and um, yeah what do we got black's uh, piece up yeah this piece is uh, hanging and it's al already really difficult to defend it and um, probably it's yeah it's it's lost for black anyways so Ruslan decided to take on c3 which uh, loses pretty fast so we want to have a look at the best variation for black and it begins with bishop to d7 allowing the queen to defend on f6 now why is just simply bringing all pieces to the action with rook e1 and has the idea of playing rook e3 rook to g3 queen takes d4 rook e3 rook to c6 preventing rook g3 that's why you gotta play queen g5 in this position if you go for rook g3 black can play knight to g4 rook takes g4 and now queen takes g4 which is drawn or at least drawish this position um, of course you cannot take with the pawn because you gotta take on h7 and have this maneuver of going back to g6 and mate him so that's why queen to g5 is the best move and now you just quite simply take on f7 go back to h6 and yeah black's a piece up but um all these pieces are needed uh, to defend the checkmate coming in the so rook g6 kind of forced queen to f8 rook g8 and now beautiful move rook to g3 and this position should be won for white okay a few more moves are needed to win this position but um anyways it's a good position for white that shows how good and brilliant bishop to h6 was so let's have a look at the game rook takes c3 and now you give check on g5 take on f6 and yeah this position is just amazingly it's totally lost for black you, you, you can't do anything so what's going on you threaten to take the rook of course so if the rook goes back to c6 c7 or c8 it totally doesn't matter because you always take on f5 you cannot take because of uh, queen takes f7 and you threaten to take on e6 with uh, checkmate coming up and uh, even if uh, rook c7 threatening to take on e7 you can take on f5 anyways because if he takes here you got a checkmate on h8 yeah and that's a simple reason why black can almost resign in order to prevent uh bishop take f takes f5 he took on d3 but this position is totally lost after c takes d3 even rook takes d3 it doesn't matter because uh you have the immediate threat of taking on f7, winning a queen over here, um, take on e6, and winning the exchange, and yeah, playing rook to e1, and takes on e6. That's why uh, Ruslan Ponomayov resigned in this position. Um, yeah, and this was the only game won by Georgia, but um, it was a nice one. Table number three, England against India, um, lost India two and a half points. And the decisive game for this team competition was the game Zetu Raman, 
against Nigel Short. And it, I don't know, if you ask me, the, the mistake began right in the opening, because Black had many chances to exchange queens and having just a slightly worse position. But he decided to go for bishop g4 and yeah, force white to not trade queens, which is a mistake. After rook, uh, queen g3, d5, bishop to d3, this position is already not good for black. And yeah, well, white played e6 here, which is not a bad move. Uh, the position remains better for white, but h3 would have been the the better move, I think. After um, bishop to e6, you simply go for queen a4, forces bishop to go back, play f4, followed by knight c5, and this should be really good for white. Okay, but e6 is not bad at all, just not the best. <laughs> So white wins a pawn, castling, and g4, and I really like this position, because <laughs> um, yeah, it is bad for black, of course, I mean, you have this queen on h8, but um, somehow Nigel Short managed to get some counterattack, and we just go like, let's say, eight moves ahead. Yeah, the queen is already on e5 now, and we'll skip a few more moves. Yeah, now the queen is on a4. However, she did it. Yeah, she did it this way. But okay. Um, yeah, Black somehow managed to to hold his position together, uh, which is not not <laughs> not easy in this position. And yeah, well, the final mistake was made right here after e7. Bishop takes e7 allowing white to go for queen f3 and sacrificing a piece, yes, because you cannot take on b7 due to takes on c2 with check. That's why you get a take here, queen a6. And yeah, if, if we just analyze this position for a moment, black is a piece up. And if black is able to uh, put all his pieces in a good proper way of defense like the bishop on f6 and rook to d7 and exchange some material. Um, black black should have good chances in, in this position, but um, white played a really good move, um, which is not that obvi obvious, but it's really crushing and uh, white is totally winning after g5. g5 with the simple idea to defend um, or to to prevent uh, bishop to f6 and you have this threat of getting your own pieces into active play and checkmating the weak king of black and that's uh, what happened in the game um, bishop takes a3 is just uh, i don't know some kind of uh, suicidal attack because there's just no hope for black in this position. King h7, rook e4, and this position was resigned by Nigel Short, because uh, king g8 would have led to a simple checkmate after queen f3. I mean, you can sacrifice uh, the knight and um, the mate will be in a few more moves, but it doesn't matter. So that's how India won against England. And Azerbaijan against Latvia, one uh, with two and a half points and the match winner like i think it was yesterday uh, it was also him the match winner for azerbaijan is uh, elchac zafari playing uh, meskovs with the black pieces in this position he already equalized with black having some chances and yeah white kind of um, overreacted, wanted to take the pawn on h6 and I don't know, maybe checkmate black, but um, black has a good resource against uh, this queen g6 and this is knight to c4 um, with the threat 
for instance, if you take on h6, if you dare, uh, there's simply knight to e3 and you cannot defend all those threats properly. So that's winning for black. And uh, rook e1 is also not good because you can take on f1, play knight to e3 and have a really nice position. That's why white decided to sacrifice a pawn on e5. And yeah, black took it. Yeah, I gave a check and took the second pawn and now ended in this position with a pawn up and not even a pawn up. Mm, it's also difficult for, for white because those two pawns are isolated and are getting weak later. So after mm, 36 more moves, black manages to win this position. Yeah. I don't think we have to go through this because um, this position is of course better for black and yeah, Safali is a better player. Um, yeah. And then we will have a short look what the world champion did, Magnus Carlsen. He played uh, with Norway against Peru today on table number seven. Norway uh, winning and uh, now in the sixth place right now having chances to um maybe yeah i don't know it's a long way to the first place but yeah let's just uh, wait and see what happens because uh, of course magnus carlsen is the world's strongest player but um the rest of the team is of course not bad but um yeah, the, the other top teams just have better players like, um, yeah, like Russia, USA, and they are here. So let's have a look at this position. Um, some kind of Benoni style position again, like we've seen in Carlsen games before at this Olympiad. And yeah, King h8, e4, and g5 was played by Cordova which uh, was, re was a really great move and I think it's the only way to have any chances against Magnus Carlsen. Play good, <laughs> of course, and play crazy or aggressive. Because if you just play slow, yeah, Magnus will just crush you slowly. So that's exactly how you should play against Magnus Carlsen. And after taking on, it takes on g5, f4 opening up, the white, white's king, bishop f4, uh, f5, trying to clo close this uh, f file, takes, takes, bishop to e5, and Emilio Cordova manages to have a better position against the world champion after 27 moves. I mean, we all know Magnus Carlsen does not always play the best openings, so it's possible to have a better position against him, but. Um, yeah, this was really deserved for black. Black deserved this. Black played great with g5. And yeah, having a better position for, with black is not that easy against Carlsen. So both sides bringing their pieces to the king side. La 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 la. A knight to g6. And I think this is the point where Magnus Carlsen equalized. This position about equal. And I, I don't think uh, that white has any advantage at all. But as we will see soon, um, yeah, <laughs> it's always tough to play against the world champion, who is just, uh, it doesn't matter how, how draw the position is. He just keeps playing and that's the point. You have to play and you know at, at any move, you know, if you make a mistake, this guy will totally crush you. And yeah, that's what happens. Rook to f7. Boom. And lost position for black. Yeah. What a pity for black, but uh, yeah, that's the way it is. Rook to f8, trying to defend it. And now I think Carlsen, uh, yeah, Carlsen made a mistake playing rook, to, rook g to f2. And uh, Cordova had one one more chance to get back into the game. 
Um, but well, let's just uh, have a quick look what he was kind of coming up with. He played c4 and yeah, this move loses immediately. This was played in the game g6. Um, trying to take it. If you, you cannot take it with uh, the pawn, you cannot take it with the queen due to rook g4. Um, yeah, that's why he gave a check on d1. But yeah, after rook f1, um, black resigned. But he would have had a small chance of drawing playing king g7. And I, I'm not quite sure. I, I checked it for some time. Um, in the first place, engine saying this position should be one for black. If you take this pawn ending, uh, one for white. But uh, actually, I think it's not one. You go king to g5. Now you can play e5. Or sorry, no, you gotta wait a move. And up when uh, the king takes on h6 and is, uh, you can play e5 because this pawn is too far away for black. That's why king g6 is coming up and after e6 c4. I, I mean I'm not 100% sure but uh, I think this should be drawn. It looks good for white of course um, but there's just no breakthrough. So that's why I think this was the last chance for a Cordova um, allowed by Carlsen playing rook g to f2. Um, yeah, what Carlsen could have done better uh, was maybe g6 in this position. And after check, check goes to g3. And this should probably be one because if you take, then you can play rook to f2 and you end up in this queen ending which should be i think it should be easily won for white with these two advanced pawns yeah um okay i guess uh, that's it for today those were the final four tables uh and magnus carlsen <laughs> of course and yeah have have a great evening and um tomorrow's the ninth round and that's that means we will see three more rounds um you can enjoy have fun and bye bye